Welcome to Angles and Acid, where we learn things maths and science. In today's video, we're looking at powers. What is a power? Well, some people call it uh, an exponent or an index or an order, as in as in bombdas, you know, brackets, order, multiplication, division, and so on. Um, so it's all really pretty much the same thing. Uh, powers, exponents, index, or order. Um, that's what we're referring to. And it looks like this. So you can see it at the number five, and there's a little three. That three is drawn up uh, kind of in the upper corner of the number, and this is actually the power. So we're saying here that five to the power of three. What does that mean? Well, that basically means five times itself three times, uh, because that's what the number is representing. It's a way of condensing information, in my opinion. Um, I can take uh, something really, really long and then make it shorter if, it, if, it's, uh, if it's the same number multiplying by itself many, many, many times. So here I've got a sequence where I've got two times by itself over and over and over again. Would it be great if we could shorten that? Yes, we can. We can shorten that using powers. So I can say this whole sequence is equivalent to two to the power to times itself a certain number of times. Well, how many times has it been multiplied by itself? Well, let's see, it is one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five times it's multiplied by itself. So it'll be two to the power of five. And, that, and that, that's how the uh, index form uh, you would represent it as. Let's look at another one where it's a little bit different. So here I've got two times five times five times two and two. So how do I condense this one? Since the two over here is sort of separated from the rest of its brethren down the line. Well, there's a really cool feature about maths um, is that uh, with multiplication, provided there's no interruptions, so there's no interruptions in the line with a plus or minus or something like that, provided they're all multiplied next to each other, uh, you can actually shuffle them and the answer still stays the same. So for example, two times three times five, well, two times three is six, six times five gives me 30. Well, that is exactly the same answer if I shuffle it backwards. So I got five times three times two. Well, five times three is 15. Double that, I get 30 again. So you can see how when things are written in multiplication, all stacked together, you can shuffle them for convenience. So if you find a better way to, if you can move this bit over there, then you can proceed with some further maths, go ahead and do that. So here, I would actually prefer this two to be down the line next to its brethren. So this sequence here could actually be, I'll just shuffle it along. So five times five, I just move them, I just move them that way. And then the twos are all together. So times two, times two, times two. Well, now I can start uh, gathering the, uh, the the fives together and I can gather the twos together. So there's five times by itself twice. So that's five squared. If there's a, if there's an, uh, a power that's two, we refer to that as squared. If it's to the power of three, we call that cubed. If it's to the power of four or anything else, we just don't bother. We just call it to the power of four, to the power of five. All right, so we got five squared times by, because remember this little time symbol here still carries along. Um, five squared uh, times two, one, two, three times, that's two to the power of three or two cubed. Uh, oh dear, I need to erase a little bit here. So for the next question, let me just rub this out a little bit. Um, so uh, not only can we use it to condense information, we can also work the opposite way. And sometimes it's helpful to sort of expand it back out again if you wanna to try to evaluate the answer by hand. So it might be really difficult to do like, you know, oh, what's, what's four to the power of seven? Oh, I don't know. And you're trying to do that in your head. It's actually kind of easy if you sort of um, break it all out and then uh, try and tackle it bit by bit at a time. So that's what we're going to do with this one here. It's relatively simple, but let's do it anyway. So six squared, well, that's basically six times itself twice plus the two to the power of four. Uh, so two to the power of four, that means that I've got two times itself four times. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four. So now we can start doing some maths here. So six times six is 36, uh, plus two times two, that gives me four. Four times two gives me eight. Eight times two gives me 16. So 36 plus 16, if I can do some maths properly, I'll get a two there, carry the one, Three and one makes four, I've got that 52, I think. I'm sure if somebody in the comment feed can correct me if I've got that wrong, because in my more recent videos, I made a mistake. Um, okay, uh, and there's obviously more we can do. So um, 
we can actually start using this power form as a way of simplification. So here I got the number 64. Uh, if you know your times tables, which I generally don't, as proven by my previous videos, um, is that uh, that's eight times eight. Uh, I could shorten that even further by making that eight squared. So that's basically what I got for you today. Pretty straightforward. It's just a way of shortening things. Uh, if you have to evaluate a, a problem with lots of powers in them, then it's probably a good idea to expand them all out and then number crunch them out. Uh, it's a lot more uh, easy to keep track of than it is to try and do uh, so many different powers in your head. Um, I'll catch you in the next video. I, again, I don't remember what it is, so I'll leave a link right here. So it'll be a little thumbnail you can click on right there and I'll catch you next time. Bye.